Right. Let's do this, Alex. Let's get this this rip this band-aid ripped straight off. This is now time for most bullshit award. The nominees yep. for most bullshit is Deacon and Sarah's relationship, the blood trail, the alien, Deacon the dum dum, <laughs> the attitude of the girl in Sea of Solitude, the gauntlet of twat at the end of Parasite Eve, and the final boss in Doom sixty four. We agree on quite a lot of these actually, which is quite funny. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. I think we need to just sort of can how can can we sort of marry Deacon the Dum Dum and Deacon and Sarah's relationship into one big Deacon? Like, well, yeah, but I'm also kind of blaming Sarah for that too because okay, she was a real dick to him when she when he first met. Oh, she her. was actually. That's a good point. She was. She a total just. Dick. Yeah, I mean, she claimed she couldn't do anything about it, but they could quite easily have left. And let's not forget, she was not sort of acting like Deacon was her husband because she was blindly following a maniacal dictator who ended up being really evil and shitty. Were you waiting that entire game for it to turn out that she had been shagging someone else? Yeah, absolutely. And she was in a different... Really, I, I'd be like, oh, she had a different husband or a different boyfriend. I was I was just waiting for that. Yeah. Um, I the, think I'm the payoff to finding her was awful, yeah. considering you've spent all this time having to sit through... Well, I didn't sit through it. I skipped through. <laughs> but the bits where he goes to her grave and you know he's always going on about her and booze is always kind of understanding of how much he misses her and whatnot oh let's not forget about when boozer goes mental as well and gets dr- just drunk and oh and suicidal. he's drunk it's like, uh, obviously it is it's like someone some kid that's never been drunk before had wrote that section and then no when one you ever like totally that. fine yeah no totally one's ever like that again. like i i nope. can be absolutely drunk but if something happens that you've got to sober up for you can fucking sober up like <laughs> yeah yeah oh. i mean yeah so I, i'm coming at this from the angle of i feel like their relationship is bullshit yeah but you seem to have not been happy with the so, mountain of bullshit coming from deacon yeah i think now that you've spoken about it um it was it is bullshit but i it, in a way that i'm i was entertained and found it funny and if i find it funny and was entertained by it maybe it doesn't make this list but basically what i'm getting at is like deacon was just thick as mince and, that, like, and he also likes shouting at anybody who spoke to him on the he's just constantly yeah. shouting at everyone. Um like so it was the things that jumped out at me is like when he'd go and see that guy in the helicopter, um or things would happen and you would be given like major story nuggets and he, he would be like finding out <laughs> oh, that basically yeah. the world was about to end and there was nothing he could do about it. And rather be yeah. rather than being like, Oh no, what have I just heard? He'd just get wound up and totally sidetracked about something he would, else. Wouldn't he? It was just unconnected to like what he was doing. Like you'd be following those scientists about and hear genuinely useful information that he should be that he should he should be like rocks to his core about in some in some instances, and he just like sort of bounces off as if he would just be like, "Oh, they're evolving, anyway. perfect, yeah, great, uh, yeah." So like yeah. that's a bit wanker. That was funny, but it was. <laughs> It, it was, was funny, really yeah. Bad. So yeah, I think but Deacon the Dum Dum goes. Has absolute to. knobber. Both of those things go. Let's get rid of them. Oh, you're getting rid of Sarah. Yeah, there's worse. There's way worse. But that their relationship was bullshit. But I didn't get personally angry like I have done with a lot of this other stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. So like talking about personally angry, I feel like <laughs> you're number three. The attitude of the girl in Sea of Solitude has to be Fuck discussed. Me. Yeah, she wound me up so much. And to be honest, I've kind of blanked a lot of it out of my mind now, but I just remember there was that one bit where she's trying to talk to her parents. Do you remember that bit? Yeah. And do you remember also the bit where that guy... Did that, did her boyfriend kill himself or something? Is that right? Oh, some, oh yeah, she had a... She was just a dick to him constantly. Yeah. Uh, that might, might she was be like that the, She was the problem. Yeah. She, <laughs> yeah. she was shitty to her little brother as well, right? She yeah. just ignored the fact that her little brother was having getting bullied at school oh that's the whole right. game is basically just her finding out how shit she's been to everybody in her life and how she's basically ruined everyone else's time while she's currently wallowing in her own self fucking yes yeah, i think that's it it's it's she's just been completely neglectful to everything else in the in our in our world yeah because she's so i mean i can kind of world. relate to that if you're if you're in your own head then you're in your own head if you're in your own world and you're ignoring everybody else's issues then yeah your problems yeah. are always going to feel like most to you but maybe i just don't want to be 
reminded of being like that in by a video game. Well, my, yeah, well, my, my I can sure relate game, too much. May, maybe I, I mean, maybe that maybe there's an element of that. Um, my beef with the game was more that I felt like it was the most bog standard on the nose. Uh, yeah. mental health story they could have told yeah. and there's ways yeah. that are interested in engaging to tell mental health stories but this is the one that has been done eight million times before and it did nothing new had nothing new to say it offered nothing new to sort of make you consider and appreciate people with mental which we both have mental health issues mm. um in a new way that makes you think differently or make people uh, make people that don't have mental health issues maybe understand it better it is just everything it did has been done before and we've heard it before and it is just rubbish it was just also did it through a deeply personal prism that we're supposed to then understand you remember the bit where she's having a go at her parents and they're like oh we've tried everything when their parents are splitting up he's like i've tried everything well you haven't told us any of the things you have tried so how the hell do i know yeah to me it just seems like you're a bit of an asshole (laughs) <laughs> so yeah that was terrible but again it it was over and done with once it was finished it didn't like it it was a moment in a game where we looked at it and was like that's dumb but it's not a moment like some of these things that actually physically affected us getting through the game which is by far a greater sin of bullshit than it is to just make a self-important depressed girl so my my number one on this list is that gauntlet of twat at the end of parasite eve which is funny because i can't believe you put that as number one actually. i didn't have to live through it but yeah i know that if i had to live through it i don't think i would have finished that game like <laughs> like the fact that you did that like when you were like i was playing it and you were explaining to me what you had to had to go through because we we both had we both had we've both had this experience to a lesser extent because in you played was it the xbox version of max Payne and i played the playstation yeah. version and you could say you could quick save, whereas I couldn't. Yeah, that that was the exact problem that we had in Parasite Eve, and that I yep. thankfully managed to dodge the bullet of my life because that final section in Parasite Eve is maybe, oh, what a stain on that game! I'm surprised that we you can still have a conversation about that game <laughs> in any sort of positive light because I think that would have just broken me. I think I think that kind of speaks to how much I was enjoying playing it. Because yeah. it was so different to where anything else we'd played, that I was a, so I was brutal. willing to sit through that end of that game over and over and over again, banging my head against it. Whereas my number one, which is the final boss in Doom sixty four, I mean you you gave up on it. <laughs> I gave up on Doom sixty four, uninstalled. And the it. <laughs> fact that you given you managed to get to the final boss, give up on the final boss, uninstall it, reinstall it, and then beat the boss before I did, whilst I was and all the while I'm still playing the final boss while you're doing all of these things, <laughs> is why for me that is the most bullshit because it was just fucking horrible. It's so fast. It oh, fires all that shit at oh, you so is. fast. Yeah, and I, oh, I, I'm glad enough I have to do that again. I never will ever do that again because it was just brutally difficult. Like, yeah. out of nowhere as well. Like, like the the difficulty spike between. I, I completely agree. The rest of the game and then this bit. It was just like, yeah, absolutely unreal. It just came from nowhere. Um, it's awful. Yeah. It is truly an awful, awful finish to a game. Yeah, I mean, Parasite Eve will game over you in that final bit where you've done three stages of a very tough boss, having already done a really tough boss before that. And then if it touches you, it's game over and you've got to start all over again. That's bullshit. But Doom actually made one of us quit. And if you if you hadn't have gone back and done it yourself, I would have also quit and just been like, well, we don't need to finish it. We'll just we've got to the end. That'll do. We can talk. We'll just do the podcast and say we couldn't beat it. Fair enough. (laughs) But the fact that I had then the you know I was so compelled to I have to do this because you've unrage quit and come back and beaten it before me, I had to do it. So yeah, let's. Well, what's the other? Oh, the alien. Go on, talk I, about the. Well, alien, I was waiting to say. Does I, I can't believe this is about this sentence is about to come out of my mouth. But does the blood trail not make the list? I don't think it does. Well, the alien uh, was kind of relentless and annoying and instant deaths are shitty but that to an extent is a compliment on the design 
of the alien's AI, where it's just putting some lines of red that are really fucking hard to walk over because the platforming is sucks. Yeah. Is not good design and therefore is technically more bullshit than the alien because the alien's actually really cleverly done. I would, we just yeah, so this didn't is enjoy the thing it that, at all. No, I didn't. This is, the, this is the problem I've got with the game in that, like, if I'm totally honest, like, the the alien filled me with such fear and dread that I didn't want it to come because I was so scared of it. Because it yeah, was kind so, of, yeah. And to the point that it actually got in the way of me being able to enjoy the game. So it Yeah, was, you don't want was, to turn it on knowing you're going to have to go through that again. No, and it's the thing that, for me, and for me that the Resident Evil games do so well, like, I found parts of the Resident Evil games as unsettling and difficult to engage with. Like, I wanted, like, while I'm playing with that section and getting chased about by Lady Dimitrescu, or that start section of the game where you're getting chased and you have to find the key to the get the the hatch that'll let you underneath the floor in Resident Evil Seven, while that guy's mm-hmm. chasing you, like those did the same thing to me as the alien does. The thing is, is they're short lived and you get <laughs> some reprieve, yeah. and also the games get progressively more silly as it goes on. This game did yeah. neither. And it's a design. Yeah, it gives choice. you the power fantasy by the yeah. end, doesn't it? This game doesn't doesn't even 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 with the flamethrower it doesn't give you enough no no and it's just like I've, if I wasn't playing and chatting to you at that time where you've got to go through the alien nests I don't know how I would have got myself through it uh, yeah I did forget about the fact that it it then adds like fucking 10 of them in it just all over the place all at once and you yeah little uh, monitor thing the what, what was that the little radar thing oh, yeah. just goes nuts it's completely useless, useless. at that point because there's about 20 dots everywhere so yeah I'm happy to admit that like I just found the alien so unsettling. I find it difficult to play. Um, I can't decide whether uh, that's a negative for me. I can't decide yeah. if that's a negative for the game, and maybe it's just not my type of game. Like, like if there's a really good horror movie, and people don't want to watch the movie because they don't like horror movies, that's not a negative on the movie to me. Mm. I don't know. I think there's a point where I'd gone for a very long time in this without being able to save it. And I I remember thinking, like, if this game fucks me over and I have to do all of that again. You had to do that as well, I think. Well, that's there that. There were a lot like, of yeah, times where the checkpoint was bullshit. You've actually reminded me in that, like, I think we spoke about this in the pod. And if we didn't, I hope we'd, we should have. Like, the way this game ratchets up tension and creates dread from the alien is not fun so it does it because it's like i don't want to get caught by this alien because i'm going to lose progress and i can't be bothered doing this section again i can't be bothered creeping through these corridors really slowly and yeah some of the insta death sections like i hate insta death i just don't I just, oh i can't stand it and so like so like yes yeah, so maybe i'm coming back around to myself in that like the way and to repeat myself the way in which this game creates tension i think is bullshit yeah i think it has to win out over Max Payne's blood trails because I blood, think so the with blood, a quick save they're, they're doable in a few minutes they're doable in a few minutes and actually <clears throat> it wasn't the blood trail that I found annoying or the most no, annoying it, thing in that game it, it was actually the the sort of maze house sections before the blood trail I found more frustrating because I there was mm. one of them I just got lost in and I and I couldn't even look up a guide because I was so deep in I didn't know where I was so I just had to run yeah. around until I found my way <laughs> yeah. out yeah um and let's be, you know, if we do it from a statistical point of view, the blood trails is probably about 3% of Max Payne, yeah. whereas the alien is about 93% of that game. Do you know what, though? Like, I would. And I it, would... Spoils the, it spoils the brilliant set design and yeah. world building of yeah. that game because you, you can't even enjoy being in it. Yep. And it's, it's, it's not even like to say, like, I can't play horror games. I do like horror games. Another, like, one of my favorite games, certainly of the 360 area, is the Dead Space 1 and 2. Yeah, yeah. Not 3, but 1 and 2. It's absolutely fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Um, I do like Resident Evil games. You you love Resident Evil games. And, I, like, yeah. I know, like, maybe we've just explained why we find them better, but, like, the li- Silent like, Hill 2 is pretty tense as well. Yeah. Um. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So it's not like I, I don't like horror horror games it's just this one just yeah i like to have a chance Mm -hmm. just a chance and this game feels like a lot of the time it just doesn't give you one i think we do cross off the blood trail 
Um, I, I actually yeah. think I would, if I was redoing this now, I would, I would rather extrapolate that out and be less about the blood trail and just the the, the nightmare pre- sequences. The, the pre- no, the precision, can, the precision sort of platforming <laughs> that this game has yeah. to do with tanky ass cr- crappy controls. Yeah, good point. Um, yeah. But yeah, so I think is that us got how many have we got? Have we got three we've now? We've got we've got our three now. So we just need to order them. Final boss in Doom sixty four, the Gauntlet of Twat and the Alien. It has to be the Doom Doom sixty four boss. I can't see because to, to me, me that just felt like let's give a, let's give the end boss loads and loads of like OP attacks and shit fucking loads of health. Off you go, deal with that. <laughs> Whereas, but then the end of Parasite Eve is also ridiculous, it is utterly ridiculous. ridiculous. The fact that it fucking gives you a save point that if you use it, you lose and it's game over. It's, it's a fake save point. Yeah. But previously did work as a save point. Is madness. There's a section in Alien as well that jumps out just just to highlight. Is There's a bit nearer the end of the game where you've got to go to one... like It's one of these little bumhole hatch things that open and close. Um, <laughs> yeah the anuses yeah you've got to go in one of them but it doesn't work so you've got to go like right across the level to a generator which then it gets the alien oh out, yeah and then right back over the other side and then i think you've it, the generator cuts out and you've got to go right back again and then go right so you're like creeping around this massive area with the alien really and as this game goes on the re, the alien really starts going for you it could, would come into those anuses sometimes as well yeah yeah i got caught in an, in an, in an anus more than once <laughs> um, I still think it has to be third though because again they wanted it to be like that Yeah. whereas I, the other two games are just stupid they're just bad design I yeah so I I just didn't like that game yeah. I think I think I just had I think and I think that's wrapped up in it um, so it, it's a notable it's an honourable mention oh yeah, yeah. I think third, it's funny sure. that we're both we're both sort of talking about like my most bullshit is your biggest bullshit moment and vice versa yeah. I am. Um, how long? I, so, like you, are you felt for me for the end of Parasite Eve, though. It's the length of it as well that's yeah. the worst, and and that you could get so far and then just have to go all the way back again. And even if you had sort of figured out what to do, there was no guarantee. You're like, right, at least I'll get back here again. It, also, as well, like you could look up a guide on how to do it, and it and it would work. Okay, so it was just sort of like it would. T- you look up a guide; it will tell you the way to go, or it will tell you how to beat those bosses with the right kind of tactics. But there is no guide that can help you with Doom sixty four. No. That just has to be fucking arduous repet- repetition until you've done it. And yeah. it angered us both to such a higher extent than this end of Parasite Eve did. It was actually quite a breeze for me, to be honest, because I could quick save and I had you taught me yeah. through it, so it just wasn't a problem for me. Um, so well, maybe, we maybe have on to... that, it, it's it, it's the honourable mention in the Doom 64 yeah. boss wins. Yeah. So we've got Alien, the Alien in Alien, and Parasite Eve as our honourable mentions with Doom 64 as our winner of Most Bullshit Award 2021. Mm-hmm. 